comments on an item that is not on tonight's agenda? No. Okay, we're going to go to our 635 public hearing for 15 Summit Avenue. And I live on Summit Avenue, a couple doors from this property, so I'm going to recuse myself. And I'm going to ask Jared to chair this portion of the meeting because we don't have a chair or a vice chair. <coughs> Oh, and I did turn, and I, 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 I turn. we're on television for those of you who are interested. Yep. Sandra Kodalars, is that the correct pronunciation? Yes. Um, who uh, lives at or the, the the property is 15 Summit Ave, East Hampton, um, and she's seeking a special permit uh, and variance to allow construction of a single-family home on a non-conforming lot under Section 11 and 13.1 of the East Hampton Zoning Board. Um, the property um, was used as a print shop and has been unoccupied. For the last few years, um, it was recently bought by the applicant who planned to convert it to a single family residence. Um, it is 9,000 square feet um, and um, the zoning ordinance requires um, for a single family lot. Oh, great. Well, the 15,000 okay. 15, um, and the, the previous building encroached on the required 30 foot front setbacks um, apparently the the applicant um, filed for a building permit um, and there was a discrepancy um, between uh, what what the applicant thought um, was allowed pursuant to, to being grandfathered in to the uh, non-conforming uh, use, um, specifically <coughs> uh, the, the building inspector uh, gave uh, permission to, um, what was it, the, the um, I'll just ask the applicant to tell you the uh, story if you want. Sure. Uh, well, why don't we, why don't we do that? Um, would you like to explain kind of how we got here and what, and what you're seeking? Sure, I can. Um, my name is Mark Reed from Heritage Surveys. Um, I am representing Sandy, who is here tonight before the ZBA on this application. And... I had submitted a letter and dated September 3rd that contained not only uh, the application form but a little bit of history to this project and to the site in itself. For the uh, dating back to 1957, I believe, one second dating back to 1957 when this lot was created and approved by the town of East Hampton Planning Board um, and the uh, dwelling or the print shop, I'm not sure if it was a print shop in 1957, but the building, the structure was located on the property um, that exists out there today. When Sandy purchased the property, is a part of the application form. Uh, there was a mortgage inspection form that is done by um, Harold Eaton and Associates out of Hadley that shows the dwelling as it existed back when she purchased the property in May of 2015. Through the process of the 
reconstruction or the remodeling of the building itself. Permits were issued by the building inspector to remodel the dwelling from its um, past condition of a print shop uh, to a single family house that she intends to live in. During that work, her contractor uh, realized that the foundation, which was an old cinder block foundation, was in failure and needed to be replaced. So he had discussions with the building inspector and um, subsequent to that, the dwelling was removed and a new foundation was constructed on the property. We went out and did a survey of the foundation as it exists today. The house foundation was totally removed, but the garage portion of it remained and was not changed. So I can give a copy of this plan to the board members. And I also have pictures that might help the members um, of the site itself. Other thing that was done was that the original dwelling had a length of <coughs> excuse me um, 58 feet in length along Plaza Avenue and that was reduced down to 51 feet so that um, the length of the house along Plaza Avenue has been reduced overall and these are pictures that were taken that I took yesterday um, Jamie do you want if you could share sure right. mm -hmm. one one short that shows the different angles of the foundation as it exists today so through the process the building inspector went out and did his inspections as he should and uh, issued a cease and assist on the building and cited sections within the zoning bylaw and an application. This application, as a result, this application was submitted to the to your board. Foremost under the section 11.12 is the pre-existing non-conforming. Uh, structures, single family and or two family uh, structures, um, item A within the zoning bylaw. So we request, um, the request is for the Zoning Board of Appeals to uh, act favorably on this application so that right now the foundation is just sitting there not it's backfilled around it, but there's there's no uh, floor system to it at all, and um, we like to try to get the house built so that Sandy can have a place to live. She's not living there, of course. She's uh, living with friends until uh, it is completed. So, as I understand it, uh, the discrepancy between kind of the the, the building inspector and, and the contractor well, was that there was an assumption at least or I guess it, it wasn't really there wasn't a lot of communication but um, the building inspector assumed that, that the house would be raised and that there would be a new foundation installed mm -hmm. on top of or Underneath. under some correct uh, and that and so once you once the old foundation was destroyed that took it out of the the pre-existing non-conforming use mm -hmm. which it wouldn't have required a permit if it wasn't destroyed right well the, the entire foundation wasn't destroyed for one and because it was on the, it didn't have a basement it had a slab foundation slab. so you can't raise a house without a first floor because the walls just sit on the foundation and there's no way of picking up a, mm -hmm. a house that's on a slab foundation you, you just physically can't do it without 
tearing everything apart. Tearing it apart. Right. So the the contractor felt that you know he was doing the right thing, and you know knowing that it was on a slab foundation and you can't raise a house without a first floor that holds the box together. Right. Um, so he felt he was doing, you know, the right thing. Unfortunately, um, you know, hindsight. hindsight, yes, you're right. <laughs> um, um, that's not, not the way it ended up. Um, but I guess looking at it, the garage foundation wasn't removed. Was the and it's still there in the pictures here. Um, was the garage attached to that yes. house? Yes, this is the picture of the listing when, and I can pass this around. This is a view of the oh, listing okay. from Summit Street. So that the, sometime after 1957, there was a connecting breezeway and two car garage installed. And this is um, from the town's record. The second sheet is from the assessor's office showing the um, plot and the house mm -hmm. on the property. Being longer by 58 feet, um, and now the house as the foundation exists today is only 51 feet going along Plaza Avenue. Mm -hmm. Questions for the applicant or anything they need is there clarified? Any, is there anybody here to speak on this application? No. Okay. Oh, okay. I have a question. Um, can I'm please state your name and address for the record? Sure, my name is Wendy Marcus, 7 Plaza Avenue, in East Hampton, obviously. <laughs> um, I'm very excited that, uh, that someone's building there residentially. I think it's good for our neighborhood. I'm just concerned about. Um, what are the plans for the rest of the house, the height, like will everything else be following um, the guidelines that we have to follow, like I, I believe it's 25 feet high, things like that. Correct. Um, the construction of the house, which uh, there are building plans that were part of the application, mm -hmm. meet all the zoning requirements and, and within the town being the height. It is a, um, yeah, okay, right there, right. Um, it is a cape looking house with a second story loft area or bedroom upstairs on the second floor for it um, and open sections to the first floor so that um, I can show actually a bigger plans right here so this is the Like can look or show the board for yeah, you, you have there. Have that, yeah. So for the audience, these are large scale of what I believe you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So this is the view from Plaza Avenue with the garage. Summit Avenue. What's that? Summit. I'm sorry. Sorry. You're right. Summit. Okay. The rear of the house being on the other side, the left and the right side of the house in itself. This is the view, this would be the view from um, Plaza Avenue. So the entrance door is coming off the summit into the breezeway area. And I'm not sure whether it's at all clear to the folks in the audience who don't have that, like that to have all the papers that we have, but basically the issue is that the front of the house, um, like the footprint before is approximately 10 feet closer to the road than what would be allowed <coughs> under the current. And then on the side, at the back, it's about two and a half feet closer to the road than what would be allowed. And in the back, it's about two feet um, closer to the like neighbor than, no wait, yeah. yeah the neighbor, than, what's would be, the than what would be allowed. So that's, we're talking about like two feet, two feet and 10 feet in the front closest to summit. Right. Now the location of the house 
relative to what was there and what is there today along Plaza Avenue and Summit did not change. So the foundation was put in the exact location of where it was. The difference was coming up Plaza Avenue to the north, it was shortened by six, by seven feet. Mm -hmm. So it used to actually go to within like six feet of the property. Correct. Line. So it's shortened by seven feet. Mm -hmm. The garage foundation, of course, uh, I mentioned, is there, it was there, it's right. still there today. There was no change to the garage. Mm -hmm. um, and there's adequate for one car parking mm -hmm. off street mm -hmm. onto the property as required under the zoning regulations, although it's a two car garage. Mm -hmm. Are there any other comments or questions from members of the audience? I just, I couldn't can understand. You your name? Can you please state your name and address? I'm Mertis Russo. I live at 17 Summit Avenue. I was just kind of surprised because I watched the whole construction. I'm right next door. And it seems to me that if everything was put back exactly like it had been, and I just couldn't understand why it went as far as it did. And then when she was all excited about them finally bringing her house, she gets a cease and desist order, and everything looked the same as it did before. Right. It's it's a process, not so much an outcome. Like the way that the rule is written. If, if the house was, if if it's out of compliance now, wasn't it out of compliance when it was built? Yeah. Yes. The, the well. Issue, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I think I don't know what she's talking yeah. about. Yeah. The, the issue was that the that the uh, builder took out a permit to yeah. basically remodel the existing structure, and he demolished the existing structure and started to build a new structure. So then his building permits weren't right. That's why uh, Joe, the building inspector, went there and told him to stop because they have to come here to this process before. They can continue. I, if they were remodeling the structure, then his permit would have been in order. I, I think actually what your question might go to is, is like the concept of grandfathering. So mm -hmm. our zoning ordinance is newer than the house. Okay. So when the house was built, there, it didn't violate any rules. But then after it was built, the city created the zoning ordinance that we have now and put in these rules for like how far back from the street and how far back from the side and put in all those rules. But of course, when they made those rules, they didn't say, if your house doesn't match with these rules, you have to tear it down, because that would be crazy. Um, but what it meant was that um, if you were going to build something new in one of those places, you would have to follow the rules, but you didn't have to tear down your house and build it new in compliance with the rules. And what happened was, because of the way that the builder was handling um, just like what Tony was just saying, like because they actually did tear it down and are building it new, it triggers mm -hmm. like the rule that if you're going to build it new, you have to follow the rules. As opposed to if you're remodeling, then you get to keep it the way that it was because we recognize that the rules weren't there when you built it. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, I guess I'm just a simple-minded person, but it just seems to me that to allow a bill to go as far as this one did and then stop it, it's like... Oh, well that, that's definitely what Tony was going to, which was that the building inspector approved a permit for not tearing it down and building it new, but approved remodel. a permit for remodeling it as it was. And that's just a different, it's a different category of thing. And then the builder did it differently than what the permit was issued for. So I guess it's not so much that, um, you know, like, the city changed the rules as that the builder didn't do it the way that the builder said he was going to do it when he got the permit. The, yeah, the other thing that, um, just to bring to light, and, and I agree with the whole dis discussion, but the builder did talk to the building inspector, and the building inspector said, okay, if you're going to do X, Y, or Z, you need to pay an additional fee for that work, which he did do, and the, you know, so the, the fee and the permits he felt in good faith that right. you know he was doing the right thing by paying. Okay, here's an additional fee, which yeah. I got copies of the right. yeah, the check for the foundation. The, you know, yeah. right. right? So that you know additional fees were paid for all that work, and he felt that you know he was 
know. It was in and, compliance. Right. 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 He was in compliance until. Yeah. Right. right. It's one of those things where the building inspector totally understands what the rules are because he's the building inspector. But it, the builder probably had never been in a situation before where they were tearing down a non-conforming house, and it just wasn't even on the builder's radar that changing the way that he was doing things was going to drastically change the way that what he was doing fit within the zoning. So I think like the way that Jared described it earlier is just like kind of a miscommunication is probably like the best description. Like it doesn't sound right. like anybody did anything wrong on purpose, but just like it's kind of a weird situation. Right. So I got a question. Can you give your name okay. for Jamie? And where you live? Twelve Summit Avenue. L A and U C H A. Twelve Summit. I live right across the street. Now, when they were tearing down that building, the front of the building was left standing, and it was propped up with two by sixes. But I believe they were afraid that a wind could come along and tear it down. They were using that as a grandfather clause. Mm -hmm. Now, for safety reasons, I think they tore it down. Right. You're, you're right. And, right you know, yeah. <laughs> looking at it, um, you know, Monday morning quarterback and everything, right. um, you know, if they had left the garage intact and just replaced the house portion of it, <clears throat> that would have been better. But I think he felt and everyone felt that you know, they were trying to do what was yeah. right for for Sandy to make sure she had a safe house to, right. to live in in the future. Yeah. Um, Did you have something? Can you say your name and address? Leo first? Sullivan, 9 Richardson Circle. And my question was, um, I grew up in a different city, but I remember there were completely different rules. If you left a portion of the foundation, because I noticed that you said the garage piece of the foundation was intact, that didn't enter into this at all? Or? Right. Well, that's something that um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if the building inspector has that same opinion relative right. to the foundation, I, yeah, because I, because you know the garage foundation was not removed; it was right. it's still intact. The pictures there. I'm not sure. So it I, could be grandfathered in. Correct. I think the building inspector wanted to make sure that he didn't overreach, and so referred her to this process. Um, or and, and even if that had been the case. Um, it still would have needed a special permit right. to go through a pre to, to do that much change to a pre existing non conforming. Same thing we're doing now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. that, thanks. Yeah. Okay. Is there anybody else that wanted to say anything? Okay. What's the order that we we're oh, actually going to close the public hearing? Usually we close the public okay. hearing. So, uh, I, I, I don't mean to move. I'll move to close the public hearing. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Public hearing is closed. <coughs> so, I think we got a good background as to kind of how it all occurred, how we got here. Um, now, it's the process of right. making sure that it can fit. Right. Um, Did everyone sign in? Do you have any other ideas? We have, um, I don't know if this one applies, 11.12. I mean, I guess that's basically what we're deciding whether it's that. And right. we do so then we go to the special permit. Mm -hmm. And do we also need a variance? Well, they would be one or the okay. other. Because, like, either 11.1 is going to apply if we, depending on how we do the garage, I think. Because <coughs> like pre-existing non-conforming uses can be altered, extended, or changed by special permit. Mm -hmm. um, and so the question is whether this is an alteration, extension, or change versus um, the um, versus like a, a new construction. <coughs> so 
Where, where's the new construction? Um, well, it's just, it's like the oh, implication of the app. Like it's, like you, you can. Mm -hmm. They may be altered, extended, or changed. Um, 13 1. 13 1. 11, 11, 11. I mean, there's the unsafe construction one, which is maybe like a little problematic. The 11.5. I would, yeah, I feel like 11.5 kind of pushes us to a variance. Because eleven five is, it's about unsafe structures that any structure determined to be unsafe may be restored to a safe condition provided such work on any non-conforming structure shall not place it in greater non-conformity. So that part's we're good there, mm -hmm. um, but provi or, and provided further that if the cost to restore this um, the structure shall exceed fifty percent of its physical replacement value, which I mean clearly that's mm -hmm. going to be in play here, um, then it has to be reconstructed as a conforming structure and used only for conforming use. So we've got the conforming use, that's not a problem. But since it's not getting rebuilt as a conforming structure, um, I don't know, like, um, I mean, I guess, I guess that's like a way around, maybe that's a way around 11.1 and the, like, being able to alter extend or change, because it's basically mm -hmm. like, if it's not conforming, you could, Almost like tear it down, except that then you have to bring it into conforming. I don't know. I feel like those two sections don't really go together that well. So it'd either be it either fall in B, B or C. C would require a variance, right? And B would require a special permit. So it's right. eleven point one two, either B or C. Um, so the question is, uh, you know, do we find the propo proposed changes would not significantly intensify any existing nonconformities or create any new nonconformities? And that the proposed changes would not cause the structure to become substantially more detrimental to the existing existing non-conforming structure to the neighborhood. Right. Um, I mean, I, I guess, like, I mean, it's maybe we could go with B, but in order to go with B, we have to find that there is, in fact, still an existing structure. Right. So it, it would seem like the safer route would be to to go to C and, and, and require a variance. Well, it's I mean, <clears throat> variances are just harder. Right. Because, like, it's got to be the whole soil condition, shape, or topography. Yeah. It's that and. So when I tore it down, where's the structure? <laughs> Especially affecting such a short structure. Right. It's a smaller. But it's the same footprint, though. I mean, I guess we could. I mean, there is now an existing structure. It's just not the existing structure. Or it's, I mean, and they're not actually connected right now. So Just like the garage? Yeah. yeah. Yes, they are. Oh, they are? Yeah. yeah. 
I mean, if we look at the findings for a variance, it said it has to be with respect to a particular parcel of land or an existing building on the land. So, you know, we've got the garage foundation still, and there's now the new foundation that's there um, that are that are connected, um, and then there must be, but I, you know. It would have to be. I feel like if we're going to go with the variance, we like don't really consider the building because if we're going to consider that there's an existing building, then we should just like stick with 11.12b because it's not like we're it's not going to intensify any existing non any of the yeah. pre-existing non-conformities because it's on the same, it's on the foot same footprint, footprint, footprint yeah. and it's going to be the same bulk. Right. If, and if anything, it actually is decreased because it's right. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's, not, away. and it's not creating any new nonconformities. Um, and the proposed changes are not going to cause the structure to become substantially more detrimental than the existing nonconforming structure. I don't know. I guess I'm kind of inclined to feel like, I, I kind of feel like since we've got the pre existing foundation and they're connected, that it's um, like that, that's. That's kind really of good. enough to get us into 11.12b. I'm trying to think of mm -hmm. like, you know, a situation where we're gonna feel like that was like going too far. Um, and it's, you know, like this is definitely a hard situation because we've had people before us who wanted to basically get a variance to do this. Mm -hmm. And we've yeah. said, we're not gonna give you the variance, but just be really careful about the way that you do your reconstruction so that you never actually tear your structure all the way down. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, I don't know. Any thoughts? I, I think it's, it's what you're saying. Is that 11 2B, is it? 11 right. 1 2. Yeah. It's less non conforming than it was before. Right. Yeah, I mean, the rough thing is just the whole like, normally it's the requirement what of like one wall standing. Where? Jamie, do you know where that, does that rule like come out of the zoning ordinance? I remember us talking about it with that barn mm -hmm. in the, yeah, um, or the garage. In the it's not in the ordinance, but it's implied because the structure is still existing. Right. And according to building codes and things like that, and how you would do construction, uh -huh. if you leave part of the structure, right. it's still considered existing, mm -hmm. or at least that's what the board has found right. in the past. I feel like going with 11.12 is more like in the mm -hmm. spirit of the right. zoning ordinance than doing a variance here. Like yeah. I feel like a variance is more of a like pushing the zoning ordinance further than it's supposed to go because I feel like <coughs> what we have here is a situation where they could have done it to fit within 11.12b but there was just miscommunication mm -hmm. with like the building inspector and like what exactly was happening there and that's why it didn't get done that way mm -hmm. but like the intention was always mm -hmm. yeah. to do it in a way right. that would have fit within that um so i'm kind of inclined to to go that route rather than consider a variance just because yeah. i feel like a variance is like yeah. more right. like pushing it mm -hmm. yeah I, I agree as well um all right so if we look to to 11.12b, um, we we'll find that the proposed variance would not significantly intensify the existing nonconformities or create any new nonconformities um, based on the the, the, the footprint. Um, it falling within. I, I don't think it uh, 
it significantly intensifies any existing nonconformities or creates any new nonconformities. No, it reduces. Uh, if anything, it reduces it. Mm -hmm. um, it would not cause uh, the structure to be substantially more detrimental than the existing nonconforming structure. Again, uh, it, it reduces the, the, the violation with regard to the setback. It also changes it from uh, nonconforming use in, uh, as a business right. into uh, a residential um, which, which fits within the general character of the neighborhood, obviously. Yeah. More. So I think that, that fits. Mm -hmm. um, and then we would go to the, then do, uh, I would assume we go to the 1279, 1279 yeah. for, the, for the special permit criteria. Um, and so under 12.9, um, we, we, have, we can't grant a special permit unless we find um, the reasonable fulfillment of the following. Uh, a, the conformance with the provisions of the ordinances the city of East Hampton, general laws of Massachusetts, and all applicable laws and regulations of state and federal agencies. I don't see anything that, that violates uh, any of that. Yeah, I, I feel like none of these really are implicated. Like, right. like there's no... There's no issues with, um, right, with the natural scenic right. or historic features because of the site. Because there's the same footprint. Uh, traffic mm -hmm. and safety, um, I don't see any Nothing issues there. It's, it's the same. Right, if anything, it's going to be better because it's bringing it into a conforming right. use. Um, disposal of sewage and refuse and, and, uh, and drainage, no issues with that. Um, nothing with the wetlands, watersheds, aquifers, um, the water supply, sewage, it's all the same. Um, mm -hmm. Off-street parking, nothing loading is and parking. Nothing change. Right. Um, Nothing with the vegetative barriers. Um, setback, uh, like we said, if anything, it, it's it's better now. Um, yeah, I think all of these are satisfied. Mm -hmm. um, so. So do you want? To, I'll, I'll move. Sure. Sure. <laughs> I'll, I'll move to uh, issue a special permit to permit the. Um, Um, alteration and the change um, to the structure um, at 15 Summit Avenue to allow it to be um, uh, um, rebuilt in conformity with the plans that have been provided um, to us as part of the application. Seconded. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, thank you very much. You. So, uh, there will be a written decision. Usually, it takes about a week, and then once that's filed with the city clerk, uh, there's a 20-day appeal period. So, um, if you act, you know, like, you, well, I guess since there's permits required here, you're probably not going to be able to get your new permit until after the 20-day appeal, or will Joe issue a permit? I don't know. You may or may not be able to get a permit from Joe in that 20-day appeal period. Even if you can, it, you pursue it at your own risk. Just I mean, that's like what we always have to say. With special permits, it's sort of up to the building inspector's discretion. But before that appeal period ends, everything you do is at your own risk. So, you know, but you're already in, at your own risk. So. <laughs> right. Um, I mean, the appeal would be, you know, like if, uh, somebody else in your neighborhood didn't like the decision that we had rendered, that, that would be like what would lead to an appeal. So it's not something that would happen like from the city, it's something that would happen from somebody else in the community okay. who didn't like our decision. Okay. So you can evaluate what you think your risks are for that. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm looking forward to visiting.
I'm so Thank sick you. of looking at that pile of dirt. I know. I've got to move the lawn. You'll lose your dogs in there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much for coming. Would you have done it all? But you were doing great. No. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again. Have everybody left you? I guess so. <laughs> it's my name. Well, her jacket. You got her soldiers. That's, that's her jacket, though. Um, the applicant. second public hearing tonight from Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity seeking a determination of substantially of sub minor changes of minor changes modifications amendments to improve comprehensive permit for two single family residential units um, at 248 and 230 East Street if you could explain what you're proposing to do sure and um, the address is currently 246, 248, but I think at the time of the permit it was 230, so in, in case there's any confusion. Okay, so we probably want to correct the address because the permit condition will have to go on the land records, I assume, and we'll have to okay. correct that. Yeah. Okay, so I think the 246, 248, I believe, is what was determined to be the final address. Um, so um, I have brought, um, there's plans that probably you have in your package, but I brought these that have um, the changes highlighted in red. Um, Thank you. And my name is Megan McCrown, the Executive Director of Pine Valley Habitat. <laughs> change to the footprint of the building or to the um, uh, approach from the road mm -hmm. but we were looking at the drainage around the house after the construction period and we've been on the site in um, we would like to widen the space um, for the swale that runs along the side of the property um, also when we did the original permit we had two sheds located that said to be determined um, location to be filled so we've done the final locating of those sheds and adjusted the grading to make sure the runoff goes around the sheds appropriately um, we also wanted to make the walkway from the parking for the unit number one to be a more direct route um, the original plan was sort of a semi-circle um, walkway and we thought that a with a some minor just a minor shortening actually of the parking area so slightly decreasing the amount of impervious surface we could actually get enough space for a direct walkway to the front door front door rather than before because the parking was closer to get the um, uh, grading for handicap accessibility it, it was this kind of silly long arc mm -hmm. um, so I didn't think it was very practical for the grandmother with the walker who is going to be living in that unit to walk in a circle to get to her house and have to shovel all of that mm -hmm. so this shortens the walkway um, so I, I, we consider these relatively minor changes um, but we wanted to come before you today to Okay, your review. How big are the, there's, there's sheds, not storage units. I think of a storage unit as a metal box. These are sheds. These are sheds. Yeah, both of the houses are slab on grade, there's no basement, and the 
um, attics are all full of insulation. So this is so they can have somewhere to store a lawnmower or a bicycle or... How big are they? Um, I, I don't, I didn't bring the, I believe that this is to scale, but it's, it's something like 12 by eight and the other one I think might be 12 by 10. So they're right. small. Yeah. I mean, I, those are, that's just off the top of my head, but they are definitely um, sheds, not garages or a larger structure. But, and they're not trailers, they're... Correct, they're stick built, built, stick built um, sheds just by Habitat Volunteers. Okay. Yes. Aesthetically. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions or concerns? No, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. No. Does any does everyone agree that this is a minor modification yes. to their approved yes. comprehensive permit? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so all we have to do is make a motion or two motions that this is a minor modification and then we approve the modification. Is that correct? It, it, you just have to you just have to find that they're minor, and by finding that they're minor, the they are right, deemed to, to okay. incorporate that right. change. Would anyone like to make a motion? I'll make a motion okay. that um, the Zoning Board of Appeals feels that the changes proposed by Pioneer Valley Habitat for Humanity are minor and as such um, go with the original comprehensive permit. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Well, thank you. Sorry, who second? Chair. What? Chair, second. Oh, I. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> We're excited that the homeowners are going to get to move in soon. So. It's looking pretty good. I go down East Street a lot. It looks oh, nice. yeah. looks really nice. Well, and we and the, um, I'm very glad that you guys approved this because the site contractor is set to go on Monday to start doing the grading. So <laughs> <laughs> I was crossing my fingers. I wouldn't have to tell them no. But, um, yeah, we're, we're looking to get the landscaping done if, this fall so that we yeah. can be... Yeah. To help they can move in this you winter know, to, to deal with it in the better weather either you know yeah how much interior work has done are the walls up the walls are up the sheetrock is hung we're just starting painting and trim oh so you are along yeah you know at, at, at our speed the interior trim and doors and cabinets will take a while but um, we should be able to finish it what well, do you get a lot of volunteers that come in to do this work is that how and that is um and actually um the homeowner for Unit 1 arranged to do a volunteer orientation here at the city building next week um, with the Housing Commission. So if any uh, of you guys want to be volunteers, we have an orientation that's going to be right here in the, in the municipal building. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go back to the beginning of our agenda. The approval of minutes of 8-18-2015. I have one question, Jane, mm -hmm. about the minutes. Yep. Under the public hearings, um, it's listed for the chicken application. Present were Elizabeth Sinigan, the applicant, Dan Hagen, city councilor, and 12 members of the public. Isn't Dan Hagen just a member of the public when he comes I'm just wondering why we single out a council person who happens to speak on an application. Just a question. I would consider him, there are 13 members of the public, and then later on you, you actually quoted people's names, and mm -hmm. instead of making it like, he, like just because you're a city council when you attend the meeting, you're, you're, recognized. you're recognized more than average Joe citizen, that's all. Okay, I, I can I can amend. Well, it doesn't no, it doesn't need to be amended, I don't but think I can future. No, I don't well, think it matters. Yeah. Well, I mean, did he come? Did he come as the city when councilor he spoke, or yeah, as he said, a member? He of said, "I'm Dan Hagen, and I'm the city councilor, not for this district, but for another right. district, oh, and I'm yeah. here." You know, so you know, he was he was here in his official role. Okay. I mean, right. I mean, okay. I, it seemed like he was he was here in his official role. So I wrote it into the minutes yeah. that way. All right. Okay. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. All right. As he recognized, as he mm -hmm. introduced himself and told yeah, He did say that like other you know, people in the area had gone to him and talked to him in his 
role as a, even though he wasn't, you know, he's not yeah, the counselor of that precinct. Yeah, yeah. I just look at him more as a member of the right. public. Right. 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 That he shouldn't be getting special. I mean, I'm happy, that's all. <laughs> okay. I'm happy, I'm happy to amend that. No, no, no. 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 Everyone disagrees with me. I think it was so. just a general question. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I leave it alone. Okay. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I'll, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the August 18th uh, uh, zoning board meeting. Second? I'll second it. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda. Correspondent and requests for comments from other boards and committees. I do not believe we have any. There are none. Okay, reports from city officials. Um, the, only, the only thing, there are some postcards on yes. Yes. Um, yes. 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 some mail. Yes. Um, so the, the postcards are from um, Valley CDC to mm -hmm. invite everyone to the Parsons Village open house, which is, I believe, 25th. 25th of September, shortly. Friday. Yeah. And the other piece was from DHCD, um, I think just oh. giving some information about zoning, um, um, you're looking at so the housing, affordable housing seminars and stuff like that. We don't yeah. have any money in the budget, so if you want to go, let's. <laughs> <laughs> it's at the Lantana in Randolph on Friday, October 2nd. If anyone wants to go, there's the registration <laughs> form. Okay. Other related businesses, review of zoning ordinance regarding farm animals, chickens. Now, I know our approval from two months ago was appealed. Mm -hmm. However, I don't know whether just because of that, and we had a lot of neighbors last month, is a reason to change the regulations. I suspect if you are a homeowner, and the zoning regulations said you needed to get a special permit if you were going to get two chocolate labs or two yippy terriers or two hunting dogs in your dog run, all the neighbors would come to the public hearing mm -hmm. and express concern, even though those are perfectly acceptable. Or if a house was sold and they had two teenagers with their driving licenses and cars, neighbors would come to a public hearing to express concern. And is, that, is there really a concern about chickens or is it the perception? And I would request, this is my opinion, Jamin, that we ask the um, health commissioner, Jackie Duda, how many chicken um, households she has on her list or have registered or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and if there are any issues with them. And if there are, then maybe we should change we them. We should look at it, yeah. But just to change it because neighbors, in my opinion, aren't aware of what four chickens do, I, I just don't think that's a, that's fair to the people who want to have chickens. Right, I, I agree with you. I do too. Yeah. I do too. I'd rather have chickens on the two chocolate if, labs, the two yippee terriers. Yeah. But, if, but if you got something from Jackie, Jackie you, you, yeah, you could, if we have an we issue. We should investigate it. Okay. So my, my, my understanding of the reason why I was asked to put that in the agenda was because there was the sort of under the the conversations were that it's unnecessarily burdensome to go through a special permit process, and that the board was tr interested in making it easier. Oh, to have see, and I would I would agree with that. And I was under the impression we were looking to make it harder. That also, I mean, this is so I I was just asked to put it on the agenda. It's okay. really up to the board to discuss and. You know, Who asked you to do that? Just um, it was. It came up in the last meeting. Um, okay. I, I, I thought I thought that there was the conversation that that the board should discuss it, so I put it on the agenda. So we could discuss it. You know, because it's not on the agenda, it can't be discussed at all. Yeah. Well, why don't we? Why don't uh, we? Yeah. Do like you said, go. Yeah. To, Go to yeah. the uh, unless we hear otherwise, like what you were talking about. I don't think there's a problem with the way it is. Yeah, yeah I, I agree. Yeah. I would even take out the special permit because to me, requiring the public hearing gives a perception that this use is maybe di different and maybe you wouldn't want it in your neighborhood. And I don't, so we should hear from Jackie whether there are issues with chickens. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Okay, uh, last okay. item, ZBA process and policies discussion. I don't remember why I was asked to put that on the agenda. Um, I think we're doing 
very good with our processes and policies. Okay, so no, no discussion. <laughs> okay, does anyone have anything else to bring up tonight? Nope. Motion good, to close? I was going to say, Jared did a good job on Yes, he did. Showing you with the Thanks, I was not expecting that. 11 <laughs> yeah, yeah. I asked Maggie, but she didn't. Yeah, she did. It's a, we drew it's a surprise at Tony and I said, no, we get Jared. I'm the, new, I'm the newest. Yeah. Okay, so can I ask, do you guys want to carry these, either of those items or anything else, onto future agendas? Maybe the chickens, a report yeah, from Jackie yeah. Duda. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I would. It's a good thing to look at, even if yeah. it's only once every other year or every year. It's a good thing to look at. Shows that we're in, interested in right. either making it easier or harder, harder. depending on right. whatever yeah. the yeah. situation is with uh, mm -hmm. you know, the health department right. and, and the public. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion that we adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.